Hey everyone, this is an old slide presentation, but I just reviewed it and I felt, you know what, this is, the content is still good. And so I'm not going to do any updates to it. I'm going to present it exactly as I see it here. But uh, the learning outcomes from this video are going to be that we will understand how country of origin labeling functions in Canada, and we will be able to interpret the uh, product of Canada, made in Canada, and uh, uh, imported requirements on labeling. And you may be saying, wait a second, I'm, I'm in the nutrition class. How does country of origin labeling relate to nutrition? Well, it relates to the other core theme that we're doing in this course, which is really understanding uh, and getting an, a, a strong introduction to the regulatory frameworks that define how consumers view the quality and composition of their food products. And so it's a little bit tangential, but it also falls into that labeling space. And it relates back to that, that quality and composition argument that so many consumers have, that they want to know what's in their food, who made it, is it going to be healthy for me? And seeing some of those other halo type effects of quality related to food products. So for many consumers right now, knowing that their food product was made in Canada or it was made in Canada with Canadian ingredients and as such eligible for the product of Canada labeling is very important for them because they want to know that they're supporting local economies. And so this type of labeling is important. And we, we reviewed the... Uh, guidelines for um, uh, the old food guide, <laughs> the old food guide, the new food guide, the guidelines for uh, healthy eating in Canada. Well, um, in there, there was discussion about the importance of supporting local food economies as part of healthy eating. And so having clear country of origin labeling requirements is part of that broader spectrum of what does it mean to be eating healthy? Well, knowing that you have a support for your local economies is part of the emotional connection that we create with our food. So let's just jump in and what does country of origin labeling mean to consumers? Well, it's, it is really, it's confusing, honestly. And I, I'm bringing up these different examples of food products that I found in the grocery store. Uh, again, this is a slightly older slide presentation, but the content is still relevant. The products may have been updated. But take a look at this. This is a mango juice. We don't grow mangoes in Canada, but it is made in Canada from domestic and imported ingredients. If we take a look at those ingredients, well, if we, if we, in a moment we'll define what those definitions are in terms of what is domestic and what is imported. Well, the water would be domestic. Mango pulp, sugar, we may be creating citric acid here in Canada, but we are not, uh, to my knowledge, uh, creating our own guar and xanthan gum. Natural and simulated flavors. So the bulk of the ingredients, uh, you could argue the water is the major ingredient here and therefore is the major domestic ingredient. Everything else, for the most part, is most likely imported. Um, but the manufacturing is indeed in Richmond Hill and therefore it is made in Canada. And that use of the Canadian flag is also interesting because there are um, regulated uses and the use of a Canadian flag is a, uh, and the application of a Canadian flag is something that's subject to trademark uh, representation and therefore it can't be just applied on any product that's out there. Um, how about this? This is maple syrup. It's got a Canada organic and you've got a Canada number one grading standard. Um, it just happens that this product is indeed a product of Canada, but Canada number one grading doesn't necessarily mean that it's made in or a product of Canada. Similarly, the application of a Canada organic um, certification just implies that it it meets the organic standard under the um, Canadian Food Inspection Agency requirements and the um, the certification bodies that oversee the Canada Organic Program. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is a product of Canada. So it's it's 
convoluted and interesting to see, well, we've got a maple leaf on there, but that's because the characterizing um, product is, it is indeed maple syrup. But in this case, it is indeed a product of Canada. We can see that designation on the product itself, but you have to dig deeper. You can't just look at the surface and say, oh, Canada number one, therefore it must be Canadian. How about this? Well, here we've got uh, we've got a grading standard on the front. In this case, we've got a Canada flag, which may or may not actually be legitimate, but we've got a USDA organic on there. So wait a second, this is this is convoluted. Now we've got a USDA organic and a Canada organic, and it's certified by EcoCert Canada. But where is this from? It is a product of China, and so. In the case of agricultural products, just because it meets a Canadian grading standard doesn't necessarily mean it's a product of Canada. And so it's it can be slightly misleading to the consumer to have some of these labels on the front. You have to, as a consumer, make sure that you are evaluating the package. And so while this package may not be factually incorrect, um, it is misleading potentially to a consumer if they're not looking for that fine print on the back saying product of how about this? This is grown close to home. We have had a number of discussions about what is the definition of local. Well, in this case, it is a Foodland Canada. This is a third party um, certification. It is endorsed by the Ontario government, but it is a third party certification for agricultural and commodity type products that are grown and are processed within Ontario. So it is a, it is a Canadian product and it is local, but uh, We've noticed that there has been a bit of vagueness and a bit of um, a lack of uh, balance between what defines a local food product between provincial and federal um, definitions. And so they had to instead use a very creative <coughs> a use a very creative way of articulating that it's a local product without saying local. And sometimes you'll see that sort of creative marketing. But in this case, we know it's grown in Ontario because it's got the Foodland Ontario marketing designation. And that in its own right implies that it is a product of Ontario and produced on an uh, agricultural operation in Ontario. Oh, here we go. And we've got a, a Canadian symbol. In this case, we know it meet, it, it clearly meets the, the trademark designation for the Canadian flag. You, you have to present a Canadian flag in a way that is very, very deliberate. You can't, you can't modify the, the color, you can't modify the tone, you can't modify the number of points on that. But note what it says, a proudly Canadian company for over 40 years. It's not saying anything about that product being a product of Canada. It is just implying that it is a Canadian company. And so that is, it's sneaky. Um, in the case of many of these, um, I'm not speaking specifically about Jane's or Sofina, but many of the meat products that we have in Canada have been um, in a really interesting situation. And much of the highly processed uh, poultry in particular, is imported uh, from the United States or Brazil or any number of different countries that have um, permissions for importing of poultry into the into the country. And so we may not be able to identify what the country of origin is on this product. We do know down here we've got a inspection legend, but that does not imply it's a product of Canada. An inspection legend just implies that it is produced in a federally inspected meat processing facility and it will have an establishment number designated for that product and it does not mean that that content is Canadian it just implies that the manufacturing establishment is regulated by the Canadian government and under the C under the CFIA oh here we go another one oh it says Canada's favorite it's got a uh, maple leaf it's got a grading standard on it but it is a blend of Canadian and Argentinian honey packaged in Canada. So you do have to be very, very deliberate to read your labels to understand where food products are coming from because all of this is legitimate and it's, 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 it's fair and legal for them to have a blended product. And 
what their statement of claim is on the label is that it's not that it's a Canadian product, but that it is Canada's favorite. And that would likely be substantiated by saying uh, McCormick Canada and Billy B. Honey Products would go and look at the um, market data from Nielsen or some of the other uh, market analytics companies and say, you know what, based off of volume, our honey sells the largest volume by far, and therefore it must be Canada's favorite because it sells the largest volume. And that justification is true, but it, it at what point does this sort of statement become misleading towards a consumer? It's, it's, it's challenging. Um, here's another Canadian company, Highliner, based out of Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. However, this is a product of China. And so again, just because it has a Canadian company doesn't mean that that company isn't a multinational company with manufacturing facilities around the world. So you do need to take time and make sure that that product um, has clear identification for where that uh, country of origin is. And in the case of in the case of Highliner, a Canadian, a great Canadian company, they have multinational operations with uh, manufacturing around the world. And so this is a Chinese product made by a Canadian company. Oh, here we go. Oh, finally, we've got a product that is 100% Canadian. And it clearly declared on this product, uh, in the case of Quaker Oats, there's lots of um, oat production in Canada, and therefore it is a 100% Canadian. Now, what's what's tricky is that there's other label designations that can be on this product. We've got 100% whole grain up here, and that is a, a third-party uh, labeling system uh, and there's an organization that does whole grain certification um, on different products. And it, in, in this case, it's a third party certification that they put on there. But this, this is, uh, we don't have any coffee plantations in Canada of any size. However, you can make a um, method of production claim stating that this is roasted in Canada. So coffee would be imported into Canada and then the additional processing of roasting being done. And so we'll get into some of these definitions in just a moment. So product of Canada, if it is a product of Canada, it has to be predominantly ingredients from Canada and the non-Canadian non ingredients must be 2% or less. And this is all listed for those of you who are following along in my course in the guide to food labeling for industry from the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. So um, non-Canadian ingredients must be 2% or less for it to have that product of Canada designation. Made in Canada from domestic and imported ingredients means that it is manufactured in Canada and it may include Canadian and imported ingredients and components. And what it has been declared is that you can change the order of your statement. So you can say made in Canada from imported ingredients, or you can say made in Canada from imported and domestic ingredients if imported ingredients is the dominant ingredient. So you can change the order around relative to the, the formulation and the, and the, um, Domain. Now, what they have stated is that it is misleading for a company to put in there and say, made in Canada from domestic and slash or imported ingredients, because that is misleading. And that or statement implies that it could be all imported ingredients. And therefore, it has to be factual and true and not contain or statements. You can use these processed in and, and use the appropriate um, manufacturing terms, so roasted, blended, prepared in Canada, and that implies that it's imported ingredients and finished in Canada. Now, if it has a grading standard, I realize that uh, there's, uh, I should, not my class, but I should host a, a, a video series on grading standards for different commodities in Canada, but uh, Grading standard just means that it meets the standard of identity and any other um, compositional requirements for the grade standard in Canada. And there are different lists of incorporation under the Safe Food for Canadians Act and Regulation for the grading of different commodity products. And that may be uh, fruits and vegetables. It may be processed fruits and vegetables. It may be canned products. It could be things like maple syrup or honey. Could be meat or eggs or poultry or fish. Those grading standards are there, and um, they're important for um, understanding that you are getting a food product of a certain quality. 
but it doesn't imply that that's a product of Canada. Second of all, you could have uh, Canada Organic, and again, Canada Organic is a certification for organic man er, manufacturing and um, agricultural practices, but it does not imply that it is Canadian content. Now, imported product, this is where you have to have the name and address of the Canadian company and country of, and in some cases, you have to have the country of origin. You don't have to always have the country of origin, and in, and, and what's 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 complex is when you have multiple origin uh, streams on different ingredients. So for example, you, perhaps you've got prepared mustard here. Perhaps this was manufactured in the United States, but perhaps the mustard came from Canada and the vinegar came from the United States and the spices came from India. What is the country of origin on this product? Well, the country of origin typically is the final manufacturing location. Um, so in this case, this is very likely a American product. And so on the label, you would have imported for and the country or not the country, the company of note. And you have to have the name and address of the manufacturer of, for that for that imported by. So in certain products, you do have to have the country of origin. So on wines and brandy, on dairy products, honey, fish, seafood products, fresh fruits and vegetables, eggs and egg products, meat products, maple products, processed fruit and vegetable products, you have to have the product and the country of origin or, or foreign state of origin on the label. So if it's, if it's prepackaged cheese, then you have to say product of this country or so on. Now... If you have a Canadian Maple Leaf logo on a package, you have to accompany it by a process or content claim uh, it, with respect to the fact that you're implying Canadianness with, uh, with the application of that leaf. And therefore, you have to be extremely deliberate about making your declaration about how it is Canadian. So in, in, in each of these, there is a deliberate statement accompanying the Canadian leaf application. So 100% Canadian on the oats, proudly Canadian company on the chicken fingers, and Canada's favorite on the honey product. There are other branding strategies that do link back to um, country of origin. So the blue cow, I realize that this is an old slideshow and the blue cow has been updated, but the blue, the blue cow from the Dairy Farmers of Canada implies that it is Canadian dairy content, Blue Land Ontario, Canadian beef, Canadian pork, VQA from the Vintners Quality Alliance for wines. There are different Canadian branding strategies uh, with third-party labeling um, programs that can be used on Canadian labeled uh, packaged goods. And there are separate rules about what is necessary for those certifications. And I'm not going to cover those at this point. So are, are there controversies? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in the United States, there was expansion of the the farm bill, and if you can imagine, in in um, in Canada, oftentimes agricultural products will be raised in one country. They'll be sent to the other country for processing, and then sent back for finished as a finished product. So, for example, maybe you are raising beef, and you are um, you've got young uh, young cattle being raised in the United States? They're sent up for finishing to I don't know to Canada and then sent for slaughter in the United States and then the beef is sent back to Canada for further processing and then it's sent back to the United States for finishing and and packaging. Where is the country of origin? And there's been a lot of different uh, discussion, but um, all sorts of different uh, multiple classes under uh, the USMCA. I realized that the USMCA only just came into effect recently, and I haven't had the chance to evaluate all of the country of origin labeling requirements, but you have to be really, really aware of the fact that there may be country of origin implications depending on all of these supply chain issues. Where did your product come from? How much content is it? How many times did that um, during the transition of that supply chain, did that product cross the border? And how many multiple borders did it cross? So again, and just in quick summary, 
Um, the animals cross the border frequently in particular, and this was the, the subject of the American Farm Bill in 2008, that slaughter process is doesn't allow for carcass-specific traceability. At, at least uh, it's, it's, it's uh, going to add cost. And most of the products that we're uh, consuming in North America, our customers are extremely... Um, averse to increases in cost. And even though there may be significant uh, implications on improvement of food safety, customers are always nickel and diming on their food and increasing costs is always something that uh, food manufacturers are very, very wary of. So it's, it's very, very common that during the processing of meat, you're going to have what's called commingling of, of product primals. So you'll, you'll mix meat into bulk bins and it's very difficult then to trace where was the origin of that cattle from. And so what's, what's challenging is that country of origin rules only apply to uh, primal, subprimal, and uh, um, retail cuts of meat, and they don't apply to processed product. And so let's say it was a Canadian-born cow, and it was bred and slaughtered and processed in the United States, therefore it's a United States product on that final retail cut. Now, just a quick summary. Local food means it was food produced or harvested in Ontario. This is the Local Food Act of 2012 in Ontario. And as such, if it's processed in Ontario, then it, it can have a local food uh, label on it. But under the Federal Labeling Modernization Initiative, I, I realize I should um, double check the up-to-dateness of this, and this is why I constantly say to students, do go back to the Guide to Food Labeling for Industry to double-check what is the most modern, but under the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, as of the publication of this uh, slideshow, it, it was food produced in the province or territory in which it was sold, or food sold across provincial borders within 50 kilometers of the originating province or territory. And so I know I've worked with some clients who were... Uh, um, working farmer's market in Ottawa. And as you can guess, um, Gatineau is on the Quebec side, whereas Ottawa is in the Ontario side. And could you label something as local if it was grown in, in uh, the outskirts of Gatineau, which is very local, it's only a few kilometers away, but because it had tr uh, moved across that provincial border, according to the Ontario regulations and where and the jurisdiction where it was being sold, it is not local food. But according to the federal regulations, it was considered local because of that 50 kilometer um, origin on province or territory. The challenge being that if you're taking that product across the provincial border, it's then subject to the Safe Food for Canadians <laughs> regulation and you have to have a preventive control program in place. So, just a quick summary of this talk, um, one of the sort of hot topics that I'd be introducing in the Nutrition for Food Technology course. Um, again, going back to that question from a consumer perspective, how do you know where your products are coming from? You need to make sure that there's that, uh, if you want a truly Canadian product, you have to ask that question, can it have a legitimate product of Canada label? And from a, from a, uh, manufacturing perspective, we know very well product of Canada implies that it's uh, great, it's, it's greater than 98% Canadian derived content um, in terms of the ingredient declaration. So you have to line up your formulation and do supplier verification on each of those ingredients to know that each of those ingredients was indeed uh, grown and processed in Canada to have that product of Canada guarantee. Local on a label is, uh, it's crafty. And so I do love local food. I love the small businesses and I am a big supporter of them, but I always caution them to be very, very careful about how you're framing the wording local. Because if you have a product that is um, made in Canada from imported ingredients, that uh, it doesn't imply local necessarily you've got to you've got to be really really careful about how you're making that indication and so instead use uh, 
very careful language to imply that you're a small business and that you are uh, supporting the local community, but your product may or may not be local within the def definitions that are out there. Use that supplier verification if you're from a manufacturing perspective to know where your ingredients are coming from and what is the origin statements that are on all of those derivative ingredients that you may be composing your products from. And the other piece of the puzzle is just get to know who your suppliers are so that you have a strong sense that indeed you've got trust on those supply chains so that your product is indeed what it should be. And I'll leave that with questions. And you know me, I'm going to say, reach out to me uh, if you've got questions. Um, again, I realized this was a slide presentation that I had prepared for a presentation to a community organization a few years back, but uh, the content is for the most part up to date. And um, I felt it was a relevant presentation for the topics that we've been covering recently. So if you do have questions about uh, country of origin labeling, do reach out to me and we'll walk you through some of the different resources that are in the guide to food labeling for industry. All right, take care and we'll talk to you again soon.